Hello everyone, welcome to Capture One Compares, where we take a look at a feature in both Lightroom and Capture One and see how they can compare and see if there's missing features in one software that's in another and what the user experience is like. And today we're taking a look at intersecting masks. This is something I feel is really great in Lightroom and just isn't in Capture One. And for people who use Lightroom and don't know this feature, you should know about it. For people who use Capture One, this is something we should be requesting uh, to have added to the next set of updates. So let's take a look at what we are talking about. First, we need to know what intersecting masks are. If we come to create a mask, right, and let's say that we make a mask, we're going to do a radial gradient just to have something really, really straightforward. I'm going to remove all feathering. So here I have a mask and just to make sure it's really easy to see, I'm just going to drop the exposure down. So here I have a mask of very underexposed areas. We could pick it up and move it. And if we wanted to adjust this mask, well, it says here there's only two ways, adding and subtracting, but that's not true. There's three ways of altering a mask, adding, subtracting, and intersecting. What is intersecting? Intersecting is saying, I'm going to find another way to build a mask. And then the resultant mask will only exist where these two methods intersect. Let me show you what that looks like. So I'm going to come to the three dots here and we're going to come to intersect mask with, and let's just do a brush for ease of demonstration. So we have a brush tool. There it is. Now I haven't done anything yet. So we still see the old mask and I'm going to start brushing and it vanishes, but you'll notice as I brush, nothing happens. We're not adding to the mask, but I'm going to start moving over and eventually, we are going to start adding, you can see there, to the mask. We can actually see the mask that we are adding to. So what's happening is the mask we are creating only exists, only exists where these two methods of building a mask intersect, okay? So how is that useful? Well, let's take a look. First, we're going to delete this mask because it's not useful. And here I have an image and let's just go ahead and do kind of an auto tone just to kind of brighten it up. And what I would like to do is make this sunset here really be more impactful. Well, here's one way that I could do it. Again, radial gradient and I'm going to drag out, but I'm going to take this so that it's almost all feathering. All right, and I'm going to want to warm up this part of the sky. So I'm going to take my color temperature within the mask and warm it. But of course we have a problem. It's warming up this foreground and I only want this in the sky. Well, we could of course subtract this from the mask. I could get like the brush tool and brush it out or I could grab, you know, the object tool and remove the whole object. But honestly, it's just easier if I was to intersect this mask only with the sky. And then we're done. It's as simple as that. Now this mask, if I press O for overlay, we can see it only exists here in the sky right where I want it. And I can still, of course, like any mask, pick it up and move it. I can still alter it. But that is how we do it. That's great. We just don't have that option inside of Capture One. Here's really the closest. So again, I'm going to do kind of an auto exposure thing here. We have the same image and let's go ahead and create a radial mass. We can do that in the same way. No real differences here. Okay. I can take that same area and I can warm up its color temperature. Great. But now I want to remove this foreground. Well, what's the easiest way to do that? Well, here, and this is going to relate back to the objects uh, uh, video that we did uh, recently, I'm just going to come to the masking tool and remove whole objects. I can come in and remove whole sections here. And while this is great, and definitely works and is pretty fast. I find that there are a lot of opportunities to use uh, the intersecting option. And I just wish it existed here in the options for masking. All right. So that's what intersecting is. It's actually really powerful in Lightroom. It's something I wish existed in Capture One. And it's a way of being able to have a mask exist only where two ways of building a mask intersect. Actually really powerful. Okay, that's what I've got for you today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.